praise the Lord. Say thank you, Jesus, for your grace, for your mercy, your favor upon my life. I'm in your presence. Give me the grace to remain in your presence by your spirit and by your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I know you would have greeted your neighbor just for the sake of it, for the love of God, just turn to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, welcome. It is good to share pleasantries. Amen. It is a blessing. Amen. Indeed, the Lord has granted us another day to be in his presence. Amen. There is just something about the breaking of the bread. The Bible says they did not know him until at the point of breaking of the bread. Amen. So the breaking of the bread brings revelation. It brings enlightenment. Amen. So I want to believe that your coming into the house of God, it will bring enlightenment to your understanding of the scriptures. Amen. And to our viewers out there who are viewing us in various platforms, I say you are welcome to this service. It is my prayer that you won't leave this place empty-handed. Wherever you are, I believe the pasture is ready for us to partake of it in Jesus' name. Because our Lord Jesus Christ ordained this day for our favor. Amen. Without wasting much of your time, I will encourage you this morning to open your Bibles to the same scripture that our father had shared about probably two weeks or some few days from now. We are reading from the book of Matthew. Those of us that have a Bible, we are reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 17. We are reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 17. We'll be reading from verse 24 up to 26 because of time. Amen. The Bible reads, and I quote, After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the tax collectors were present. And the tax collectors came unto Peter and asked him, Does your teacher pay temple tax? Verse 25, yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak to him. What did you think, Simon Peter, he asked him, from whom do the kings of the earth collect the duty and taxes? From their own children or from? others. The response from Peter was that from others. Then the children are exempted, Jesus said unto him. Verse 27, but so that we may not offend them, but so that we may not offend them, the Bible goes on to tell us that go to the lake and throw out the line and take the first fish you catch and open its mouth and you will find a drachma coin a four drachma coin take it and give it to them for my tax and yours sense of God 
when I was reading this particular scripture, I noticed something concerning the instruction that Jesus Christ gave Peter. By the natural laws of the earth, it is impossible for you and I to get money out of what? A fish. It was only right for Peter to respond to Jesus by saying, it is impossible that I should go to the lake and be able to draw or fish out a fish and get these coins you are talking about. But we are learning that Paul Peter did not respond in any other manner, but he simply went ahead and followed what Jesus Christ had commanded him to do. What are we learning from this particular scripture? The first thing is that Peter was an obedient disciple. He was an obedient disciple and a disciplined disciple. Because by the laws of nature, you cannot go to the river and expect to get money out of the mouth of a fish. But because he knew who was speaking, he understood that Jesus Christ is the life giver. He understood that Jesus Christ is the word himself. And whatever comes out of Jesus Christ, it is life. Are you with me, church? He had an understanding that whatever would come out of the mouth of Jesus is life. That's why Peter did not respond in any other way but to obey the voice of God. I've entitled, by the grace of God, our teaching today as remaining in Christ. How can you and I remain in Christ it is not easy to remain in Christ if the word of God is not in you. I mean, if Christ himself is not part of you, you cannot remain in him. What caused Peter to follow Jesus Christ's instruction, it was because Christ was already in him through the word that he preached to him. And he had no doubt concerning what Jesus Christ spoke on that particular hour. How many of us, that are so willing to follow Christ at his word? You will notice that very few that carry the word of God as a, a creative word. Remember that Jesus Christ had the creative power inside him. That's why at one point he said, ye of little faith, shall I be with you always? Bring thy child here. And he healed that child. And he went on to say, if you have faith as little as a mustard seed, you shall command the mountain to be cast out into where? The sea. Jesus Christ demonstrated his creative power. And that creative power is still in existence. It is still in operation in you and in me. If only Christ is where? In you. Jesus Christ said, he rewarded Peter by saying, go and pay the temple tax 
for me and for yourself. If Christ is in you, there is nothing on this face of the earth that you can fail to achieve. Because the author of life is in you. Let me quote what my father in the Lord shared with us. He said, you will succeed. I will succeed. Because, not because of my ability. Not because of my capacity. Not because of my power. But because of Jesus. Your ability to succeed. The ability of Peter to succeed in getting the four drachma coins was not in his own ability, but it depended on the word that was spoken through the mouth of Christ. That came out of the mouth of Christ. He carried that word. And that word was a creative word. When he went that side, he was simply fulfilling what that word had instructed him to do. Servants of God, if you and I, we remain in Christ, there is nothing, I repeat, on this faith of the earth that you and I can fail to achieve. Because the author of life is in you. Tell your neighbor, if the author of life is in you, you achieve whatever you desire according to his will. Peter had every right to tell Jesus, to say, Jesus, let me tell you, I'm a renowned fisherman. I'm known everywhere in this city. There is no way I can go to that river where you are sending me to go to go and do what? And get coins out of the mouth of a fish. But he chose to obey the voice of his master. Are you obeying the voice of your master today? If the word of God is simply an utterance that comes out of your mouth, but it has no room in your heart, you have no creative power in you. You cannot succeed. Why? Because you've left the creator behind you. Paul became a success. Peter became a success because Christ was in, it, in them. Let us go to this scripture for you to understand. Let's go to John 6. We start from verse 56. Uh, I want us to pick something from there. Those of you that are there can help me to read John 6, verse 56. The Bible reads, and I quote, Whoever eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood, he remains in who? In me. And I in who? In if Christ is in you, there is nothing, my the servants of God, my, the people of God, that you can fail to achieve. If Christ is in you, whatever that you desire, it shall come to pass. Here the Bible is telling us that if you do what? You drink my, you eat my flesh and drink what? My blood. You have eternal life. For my flesh is real food indeed, and my blood is real drink indeed. And whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in him, in me, and I in him. Remember that Jesus Christ is not a failure. This stagnation, this limitation, this fibroid, this sickness that has found refuge in your in your body. It is because Christ has not yet 
entered your body. The day you sincerely come in contact with Christ, there will be a certain reaction in your body that will force anything that is contrary to the will of God to eject your body. People that came in contact with Jesus Christ, their lives were, they turned around. Sense of God. The word of God is a reality. Ask your neighbor, is Christ in you? What is the challenge that you are facing? What are the issues that are before you? I came to encourage you that if Christ is in you, there is nothing that is above his name. The Bible says he has exalted his name, I mean his word above his own names. Meaning that if the word of God is in you, it is Christ in you. You are living a life that is renewed. A life that is carrying power. A life that is filled with the anointing of Christ. If you look at Peter's activity on that particular day, it was not normal. It was supernatural. But he followed the instruction and he received the result. But if you take this word of God, use it as a weapon, use it as food for the spirit, man in you. I'm telling you, there are certain things that are in your body that have caused you to be stagnant that will have no option but to exit your body. Some of the issues that you are going through, that I'm going through, they require the presence of God, the word of God to be in us. If Christ is in you, I'm telling you, you do wonders in life. He said, if you partake of my blood, you eat of my flesh, I will remain in you. And you, you will remain in me. Meaning, you and Christ will be partners. When you are down because of Christ, you'll be lifted. When things are going bad, Christ will be there to lift you up. Why? Because he is in you. He will never allow anything that is contrary to his word to control your life. Why? Because you've come in partnership with him. That's why our father is saying, you will succeed I will succeed not only basing on my abilities, my power, my capacity in terms of financial stability. People of God, there are people out there that have got money. But most of their times they spend them in hospitals. Because because everything pertaining to food is in their homes. But if Christ is in you, you enjoy your resources. You enjoy your riches. Why? Because you are in partnership with the author of life. The finisher of your faith. Am I talking to someone here? Am I speaking to a live church in here? I came to encourage you. In this journey, if you are in this journey alone, you will not go far. You will need Christ to be your partner. You will need Christ to walk you through life. Why? Because life is spiritual. All these people who are successful, Indians and all these people, they are spiritual people. I've worked in an Indian shop from 1999 to 2001, I know how Tetwingi de Mushop 
Afuide Achitenj Asan Soluban Impiesh Mumona Tuleva Pela Manishoka Shikala I saw it with my own eyes. Impi Ababika Kunsh Kuri Buddha Imana in a Nini Satoa would eat a point Pierre to Abika Paota Pamies Shava Mualet. I know I'm talking to someone. Your altar can move up Paul Pia because you don't believe that Jesus Christ is your partner. Your partner is a wallet. Muna Monoku Vele Lupia, ever tweaked it in Angola. Panono Panon Uleolen Panon. Why? Because that piece of cloth or that piece of leather in there, it is your partner. But if you look at the Muslims, if you and I will go in the shop of a Muslim, if it is time to pray, he will leave your million dollars. He will tell you, my friend, if you don't want to wait for me to pray, carry your dollar. But if when, when a million dollar, someone comes, <laughs> my brother, Mulea Kuchet, Namifu Aisha San, Mwalish Vetoba Ming. Therefore, to have a contract, nine. I have to send a few more comments in Pog. In Kayakoma, I don't praise. Today, I've worked in a shop of an Indian, Patel Uvash. That's where I used to work. They will not allow you to enter their shops. Go there early in the morning. Try to open the door. You will see how they. Will please, please, please. Why? Because they are in partnership with their God. But if we, we do not remain in God, we remain in God on Sunday. Why? Because you are not, and, and you are expecting God to, to bless you. It is not possible. God is looking for a contrite heart. He's looking for a heart that is broken before him. A heart that to say, God, what is in me, it's yours. This money I'm carrying, it's yours. For me to have this money, you are the provider. But if you say, I'm going to question mark. I'm going to ask you a question mark. Tell your neighbor, are you in partnership with God? To be in partnership is to be in, in covenant with God. I'm not talking about partnership. All these things you see, contract, word contract, it comes from the Bible. Anything that you see in the physical, it manifested through the spirit. But if we overlook the spirit and we want to succeed, we are seeing the Muslims are progressing. If we can't have a paper, but in the visa, you are Yahweh. Which Yahweh? God is saying, which Yahweh? I'm not your Yahweh. Because we are not in partnership. Disconnect me from ancestral demons. Disconnect me from ancestral. You are the greatest ancestral spirit. It has to begin with you. Ah, Joshua 24 verse 5 says what? Verse 15. Someone to read for me. Let me just digress a bit from our teaching today. Because I want to dig deep. You know, if, to, father, to remain in Christ is to be a Sunday goer. No. Meet a Muslim. If we, we apologize for our God. Because we are not in A Muslim will park his vehicle. When time for prayer starts. He will pray. An Indian will close his shop. 
When time to pray is at hand. Someone to read for me. What does it say? Joshua 24. 15. There's something I want you to see there. Someone, whoever even in the audience. Uh, read. Joshua 24 verse 15. The Bible reads. If you are not willing to serve him. If you are not. Get it right. The Bible is saying if you are not what? Willing to serve him. The word if means what? It's a condition. If you are not what? Willing to serve him. A condition. If you are not willing to do what? Go on. If you are not willing to serve him, decide today whom you will serve. Decide what? Today, ma'am. Decide. So there is a condition there. If you don't want to be a partner with God, decide when? Today. If you are going to serve the gods of who? Go on. You are the one who is reading. The gods your ancestors worshipped them. So the god of your ancestors whom they did what? They worshipped. Worship. Uh-huh. In whom the land are now as for my family and me will serve the Lord. Who will serve the Lord. There is a condition. My concern is from the beginning of the context of that scripture. There is if. If is a condition. Choose this day. Whether to remain in Christ. Or to be outside the bracket of Christ. And enjoy poverty. Be outside the bracket of Christ. And enjoy to, to be me. My, uh, maltreated in your, in your marriage. Choose to be outside the bracket so that your contract fell. Why is it that go in the Muslimic region, the eastern region, the eastern block, those of you that travel, those that have gone to Dubai, maybe my brother there, you've been there. You've been there. Tell me, can we compare the buildings which are there with the ones we have here. Were you selling and buying on the day of prayer? What was greeting you when you, 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 you entered Abu Dhabi? Bells, isn't it? Go, go, go. I came to challenge your faith. This God that you want to follow is a God who is a covenant keeping God. A God who is hoping that you will be in partnership with him. I've given you the example of my brother here. I was asking him. He's telling me that when you go there, forget, just sit in where? In your room, they won't attend to you. If we could not go on your spiritual father can't and yet the Bible is saying your spiritual father is your guide you are blocking yourself from the blessings of the Lord by not paying attention to what the servant of God is telling you. Our father in the Lord is saying that for you to succeed, you need Jesus on your side. For you to progress, you need Jesus Christ on your side. For you to see life move at the rate that you desire, Christ has to be near you. But if we to Alibula Yesu Christ, Wapa Sande. My sister, you mercy. Thank you. Today I came to challenge our faith. When you say you remain in Christ, what exactly are you implying? Is it a verbal alteration? The Bible says you cannot mock him. You cannot mock God. He's an all-knowing God. Before you reach your end, he's already been to the end 
and he's come back to the beginning. He's already walked through your life. And this is a God whom we are trying to play check, checkmate with him. You can't play checkmate with God. He's the creator who created you and me. Tell your neighbor, if you want to progress, drink the blood of Jesus and eat the flesh of Jesus. He will remain in you and you will remain in him. How do you eat this bread? That is the bone of contention. How do you drink this blood? Let us go to the book of John. The same book of John, chapter 7. We'll be reading from verse, let me just start from verse 5. John 15, John 15, sorry, John 15, pardon me, John 15. John chapter 15. Let's just start from verse 1 so that we have a deeper understanding. It says, I am the true vine and my father is a gardener. And he who cuts and he cuts off every branch in me that does not bear. The bone of contention is, which branch are you? You see, when you are reading the word of God, don't be in a hurry like you are reading Times of Zambia paper. Understand the context of the scriptures. It says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener and he cuts off every branch that does not do what? The catch word there is does not what? Bear fruit. You cannot bear fruit physically, spiritually, if the word of God is not in you. You cannot bear fruit spiritually, number one. Number two, because this earth where you are, it is a spiritual arena. Don't take it that if you they just happen. No. They are spiritual. You will never be able to execute. It says, he will cut off that branch. That does not bear fruit. While the branch that does bear fruit, he will prune. So that it bears more fruit. My prayer is that we do not fall on this other branch that is going to be cut off. We are cutting a covenant. Let me get down. I, I want to zero in on this one. I don't want you at the end of the day getting disappointed. You cannot. You know why? Because you are not in partnership. Abraham cut a covenant with God. He did not stop working. Because the Bible says, I'll bless the works of what? Of your hand. That attitude where you say, Now, nah, we come only Jesus. If I go to the it will demand you to act. Isaac was a covenant child, but famine did not excuse him. Are you with me, church? Is the teaching too deep? Isaac was a covenant what? Child, but the famine did not what? Excuse him. 
So to say I'm a covenant child. Tina Pitashan Mulifi. I'm sorry to announce to you, servants of God, that you need to act. Faith without action is dead. God said, I'll bless the works of what? Of your hand. That covenant is there to back you. In the book of Psalms, David cried out and said, Father, remember the covenant that I cut with you. We said it earlier in the field, Alimons in trouble. A person who cut a covenant with who? With God, his own children cast him out of the, 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 the what? The, the palace. And he said, God, remember the covenant I cut with you. That's how a covenant operates. It works in favor in times of tribulation, in times of trial. It comes in to contend with the enemy on your behalf. Are you with me, church? So don't be that branch that God will cut off because it's not productive. It is not theology. It is not godly for you to fold your arms and say, Nalipanga covenant in Alesa. Isaac, in the way, Keshapo, go and read Genesis 26. The Bible says there was a famine that befell in the land. He was about to leave that land. God said, where are you headed to? Remain in this place. And the Bible says, next year, around the same time, he did what? Reap a hundredfold. To an extent where the Philistines rose up and they said, this one, I came to tell you, you can, that, you can be that Isaac in your family. You can be that redeemer. Mom, you can be that redeemer in your family. If you stand on the word of God and you, your, your, your faith, mom, your faith, your faith should not just be faith. I'm talking to my mother there. Should not be just faith. Act. When you are acting, you are provoking the covenant. When you are acting on his word, the Bible says nothing moves God apart from his word. And the word is where? Where you had cut a covenant, it is standing. Servants of God. And the only way you can remain in Jesus is by partaking him. How do you partake him? Through his word. The word of God should not just be a novel to you. It should be practical. The word of God should be what? Practical. Reach a point where you take God for his word. Isaac, Peter, all these examples I've given you, they took God at his word and they saw the results. They took what? God at his word. Why? Because because he's raised his word above his names. Tell your neighbor, what is your challenge today? What is your challenge today? Ask your neighbor, he's not your enemy. Look them in the eye, they are not your enemy. Tell them, what is your challenge? I'm here to encourage you that remain in Christ by living a life that is filled with faith. Practical faith. Not faith of the mouth, but faith that is practical. Based on the truth. If you can live like that, you will see results. Be practical in your investments.
Don't leave your children. When you leave this land, leave this earth, destitutes. We'll be accountable for that. Because you did not remain in Christ. And you did things that were contrary to the will of God. You've caused Abba and Abobe to become destitutes. The Bible is clear. clear. It is saying, you, in verse 3 of uh, chapter 15, you are already clean because the word of God is where? Where is this word? You are already clean of the word that I have spoken to you and you remain in me as I remain in you. Fellow believers, to remain in Christ is to live in his word. To remain in Christ is to depend on his word. Come rain, come sunshine. His word should have a final say over your life. Amen. 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 His word should have what? Final say. Not your wallet. I gave you an example. That I'm out as yes Table to we we have a safe that is very serious. I'm a local four. Come on, a piety and more than two for them. But I'm only showing I'm on a tipping. But have you secured your resources? Have you secured your life? Have you secured your money in Christ? If the answer is no, you and I are not going in. Remain in Christ by partaking of his blood, by drinking of his flesh, which is the word of God in you. And he will be in you because Christ is the word. The Bible says he was in the beginning the word. And the word was with who? With God. And God was the word. Which means if Christ is in you, God is in you. Jesus, we thank you. We need to reach a point in our lives where uku pepa kwesu takufile kwa our best party situation We must reach a point where Christ becomes a reality. Not a God of the book. I've given you my brother. He's traveled extensively. Bachelor to ever. That you go to Abu Dhabi around a certain hour. Na pa airport kumonat na baku ka na nguchirishan. Epo bali bale pepa. But if you na Christu. Where money is involved. To la bako fidia. To la change lako. In a fian shupa. The finafi spiritual husband. Ah ah. Spiritual husband of akwatila access. It's because Christ in you is not there. He's found the house. The Bible says if the, the spirit departs from the house. The word house there is standing for your body. There is no spirit on this faith of the earth that can operate in the earth realm without a body. So it will need a body in which to operate in. And you are that body. So when it leaves your body, it goes in all right places in search for a body. But it will always keep in mind of that body where it came from. That spiritual husband has found his way into the house that is finished. And by nature, the spirits are plunderers. We've seen people that were high up there financially. When the demon hits them, they are to ground zero. He will not kill you. 
he will give you suggestions my father said spiritual suggestion our prayer should be a what spiritual suggestion even demons give spiritual suggestions i came to tell you remain in christ if the word of god is in you these things that we have discussed today they will not touch you you will not be accounted to that branch that will be cut off you've labored this far only to be considered a branch that will be thrown in fire. No. Not you. Not me. Amen. Not you. Not me. You are destined for greatness. And that greatness. If there's a person that have taken time to analyze, understand it is this man you see standing here every Wednesday, every fr Friday and Saturday, Sunday I've seen this man for 10 years or over I've seen him how the Lord has raised him to where he is consistency in partnership with God my mother can bear me witness the time twice she church. I remember. But look where the Lord has reached him. Why? Dependence on the word of God. Remaining in the word of God. Who, who is Jesus in himself? The word is Jesus. What trouble is before you? Jesus is with you. Simply focus on Jesus. Peter did not look any, did not analyze. He simply acted. And in his action, taxi. It's not recorded what happened to them. Whether they were flogged, whether they were jailed, we have no idea. But the Bible says, as for Peter, Jesus Christ paid for him. I came to tell you, Jesus is going to pay your credit. Jesus is going to do what? Pay your credit. Because he was accredited to you. He was what? Accredited to you for your benefit. And he's here today to pay your credit. Is it barrenness? He's saying I'm here to pay. Is it limitation? He's saying I'm here as a credit card for you. If only you can remain in me. In this world, there are conditions. We are just from reading saying, if, if is a conditional word. There is nothing for nothing in this earth. For Christ to buy you, he bought you using his blood. There was a condition. If you do not bring the blood to secure their lives, they are mine. That's what the devil was saying. They are mine. But the moment he purchased you with the blood, he fulfilled the condition. I came to encourage you. Jesus Christ is about to fulfill that which he has promised over your life. He's able to do that song can somebody sing that song for us so that we encourage people here? He's able to do that one. Frank, take it up, please. I want you to, as you are reflecting, I want you to reflect that this God is able to do 
far much exceeding your expectation. Take it up, Frank. God is able to do just what he says he will do. He is going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Oh, 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 oh he's able. Say God is able, say God is able. Just what he says. That's why he says. Don't give up on God, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He said, oh.
Yes, he won't give up on you. I believe this song has summed up everything that we shared today. It is simply saying that he is a covenant keeping God. He is able to fulfill that which he promised. A covenant is a promissory note. It is a promissory note. It has been signed in the realms that is going to fulfill your healing. He's going to fulfill whatever that has been stagnant in your life. He's going to bring to light that which was hidden over your life. The riches that were hidden in the waters. He's saying he's going to fulfill them. He's going to unearth them. If he sent Peter to go to the waters and get a drachma a coin, he's going to collect that which belongs to you. Whatever riches that are in the waters, I came to speak to someone that you are collecting today. That you are collecting today. Oh, yeah. That you are collecting today. That you are collecting today. We are going in the waters. We are going in the waters. We are going to fish in the waters. We are going to fish in the waters. I don't know about you. I'm ready to fish in the waters. I'm ready to fish in the waters. Oh, yes. My net is ready. My hook is ready. I'm ready now. I'm ready now. I'm judged to fish what is mine. Is it barrenness? Is it limitation? Is it financial stagnation? We are about to fish. We are about to fish. In Jesus' name we are praying. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Thank you.